Hello, my name is Nicolas. Today I want to take you up in space to Cirrus. Cirrus is a game published by Artipia Games for 1 to 4 players ages 14 and up. In this video I will show you everything you need to know to play Cirrus. Hello and welcome to Cirrus. We are all leaders of a mining company that has a space station on Cirrus. Cirrus is a dwarf planet that is close to Mars and has an asteroid belt near it. The winner of the game will be the leader of the company that gathers the most points at the end of the game. To gather those points, we will need resources that we will get from our space station, but also from mining the asteroids in the asteroid belt. And those resources we will use to complete settlement projects, to trade with the trade ships, to buy new cars so we can make our space station better, we can also upgrade actions so they have a better effect, or we can use influence on the council to also get different benefits. A game of series is played in three rounds. We will keep track of this using this round tracker. Each round is divided in four phases. We have a rotation phase where we'll be rotating the asteroid belt. We have a production phase where we will get the resources from asteroids and from cards in our space station. We then have an activation phase where we'll be using workers and leader tokens to take actions on the board and on our cards. And then there's an end of round phase. So let me first show you how this first phase, the asteroid belt rotation phase works. The asteroid belt is divided into an outer ring, an intermediate ring, and then here an inner ring. So we start with the outer ring, but because of the way the board is constructed, all rings will move along. So to start, we move this outer ring, where you see the arrow here, from here to here. All rings moved along, so you can still see that all arrows are together. But now we go to the intermediate ring, which we will now turn also one time. And then to finish, we will move the inner ring also one time. So now you will see that the outer ring moved one time, the intermediate ring moved two times, and the inner ring moved three times. We now take a look at the production phase. We get resources from the asteroid belt, if we have any spaceships that are there. And we also get resources from cards in our space station. When I'll explain to you how the leader tokens work, I will be able to show you how we get the spaceships from here to the asteroid belt. But for now, I can just show you that in case that there's a spaceship near a space like this, it means that you now get in the production phase this production. So here it would mean that purple gets two advanced ceramics. You will keep track of any resources that you gather during the game on your space station board. So I think now is a good time to take a look at our space station where I can explain you how the cards work and how we will get some production from the cards we have in our space station. Welcome to your space station. This is the place where you will keep track of your resources, manufactured products, and where of course you will build your outstation cards. To start the game, we got one of these boards that shows us four upgraded outstations. It has an A and a B side. The B side is different for all players, and the A side is the same. The four resources we will use during the game are energy, advanced ceramics, ore, and ice. We will keep track of these four goods on this board, and you see that it has a limit of 12, so you can never have more than 12 of any of these four resources. Next to it you find the depository. The depository is the place where we store our credits and also our alloy. Next to the depository there is our headquarter board. We will use this board to take actions with one of our leader tokens. But I'll show you more about that in a few minutes. And then here of course are our outstations. They make up for our space station. Outstations can be 
single outstations or upgraded outstations. To start, you have four upgraded outstations. An upgraded outstation consists of two single outstations. To provide you with a quicker setup, they have printed these upgraded outposts on one piece of cardboard. But you should look at them as being four different separate upgraded outstations. Later in the explanation, I will show you how you will be adding cards to your space station. But for right now, I will show you that this is the cost of a card in the top left corner. Each card also has one or more production squares. An upgraded outstation has one or more functions that we will activate by putting workers onto our outstations. A single outstation has one function. So for tracking our production, we got the production from our asteroids where we have a mining probe. And now we can add to that all the production symbols from the cards from our outstations that we have in front of us. So this would mean that we get two ore, one ice, one energy, one advanced ceramics, one influence in the council, two credits, another advanced ceramics, and then one energy. And keeping track of these resources will happen on this board. So now we're back outside. And the first thing I want to show you before we explain the actions that the leaders can take on the planet is that if we gained any influence, that's this symbol, we will put it out here because the influence we can use during our leader actions to take special actions with the help of the council. At the start of the game, all players get five leader tokens. We will use these leader tokens to take actions on the board. Everywhere you see one of these blue symbols, this means you can place a token on there to take the action. We will use these tokens to cover up some of the actions when we are playing with two players or three players. With four players, we use all the possible action spots. All spots on the board where you can go to with your leader token show you the symbol of the action, which is placed inside this hexagonal shape. You can see it here on the Contractors Association or here on the Construction Yard. They all show you the symbol of the action inside this shape. Let's start with the first action, and that's the Trade Bureau action. When we go to this spot with our leader token, we will now be able to take these actions. Again, this is the main action to go to with your leader token. And now we search where we can find these two symbols. The first one is up here. We can find it here. The second one is here. It's the settlement projects. So this means we can take this action two times and then the settlement projects action we can take one time. The first action is the docking bay action. This will allow us to trade with the trade ships because they have deals for us. For instance, here we can trade two ceramics and we can trade it for four coins and one influence in the council. And we can take two of these deals from the trade ships. The workers are not for now. We will use them when we go to our space station. Second thing we can do is go to the settlement projects action. How does this work? This is one of the main ways to gather points. This is the symbol for points and this is the cost for the card. When you go to this spot, you can do two things. If you have all the necessary resources to pay for this card, you take it in front of you and you get the amount in points. What you also can do is you can reserve the card. This would mean that I don't have the necessary resources to pay for it now, but I take it next to my space station. And any time when I can complete it, I pay what I need to and I get the points. Just mind you that when you cannot complete it by the end of the game, you will get negative points. You will lose half of the victory points of this card rounded down. And last thing you notice is that we see the settlement project symbol also here. This means that during the first round, when you take this action, you will also gain one influence. During the second round, there's nothing special that happens. But in the third round, when you want to take this action, you will use one of your influence from the council. So if you don't have any influence in the council, you will not be able to get one of these cards. Whenever a card is removed from the settlement's row, we will not refill it until the end of the round. 
The next action is the construction yard action. When I place my leader token here, I can buy cards from this row to make my space station better or bigger. Again, like with the trade bureau action, you will see that the action is explained underneath. And here there's also two possibilities. We can buy a card to make our space station bigger, or we can upgrade one of the outstations we already have by adding an extra car to it. I will show you that in a minute. Just important to know is that when you buy a card, you will always receive the victory points for it. You can see the symbol here. But if you use it to make your space station bigger, you will also get the production one time when you place the card. But you will not gain the production when you use it as an upgrade to an existing outstation. Before you decide which card you buy, you can, if you have some influence in the council, spend some of that influence to take extra cards from the deck. Like in this case, I could spend this one influence to now take three cards from the deck and I can add them to the offer. After I decided which of these cards I want to buy, I pay its cost, you can see the cost here in the corner, and then I take it with me to place in my space station as a new card, a new outstation, or I upgrade one of my existing outstations. Let's take a look in our space station how this will work. Now that you have bought a facility card, you can bring it to your space station and add it to it. If you bought a card to place it as a single outstation to start a new outstation, you would now place it near your other stations and you would get the victory points and also the production that it delivers. Once you have a single outstation, you can choose to upgrade it with a new card. So when I buy a new card and it doesn't have to be the same color, I now choose I can start a new single outstation, gaining the points and the production, or I can place it underneath an already existing single outstation. It has to go underneath. If I place it underneath, I do get the victory points, but I do not get the production that's on the card. A single outstation can only be upgraded once, so this is the maximum that you can do with one card. And this of course also means that you can never upgrade any one of these starting upgraded outstations. Adding cards to your space station will give you more production at the start of the next round and will also give you more functions that you can activate when you place a worker on a card. These functions will give you extra production and also extra action symbols. Later in the explanation I will show you how we will be placing these workers on the cards. We can also go to the council and spend some of the influence that we gathered there. Spending influence allows us to take actions. Some actions like the first one, the Trade Bureau action, is an action that we can also take with our leader token. But the Launch Spaceship action, the Probe action, and the Research Program action are actions that we can only access through the Council or through cards that we have in our space station. So the first one here means I spend one influence to take the Trade Bureau action one more time. The second one, spend one influence to launch one of the probes. I will show you that in a minute. The third one, one influence to take part in the research program. And then the last one is using one influence, spending one influence to take one of these favors. I think now is a good time to launch one of our mining probes into the asteroid belt. If we want to launch a mining probe into the asteroid belt, we can do that from any space between these two dashed lines. When you enter it on one of these two parts, one of these two zones, this is free, this doesn't have any cost. The moment you want to start moving towards the inner ring or the intermediate ring, or you want to move further than these two dashed lines, this will come at a cost. When you cross this line, because you really want to go to one of these asteroids, this will cost you one ice. When you want to move from this outer ring to the intermediate ring, 
this will cost you three eyes to pass through this full white line. So this is three eyes to move to this spot. When you want to move even further to the inner ring, this will mean you cross this dashed line here and this costs you five eyes. What happens when you move to one of the asteroid spots and you land on it? You will take the victory points that are shown on the asteroid itself and then, this is the production, you will get that production one time. So if I move here to Matilde, it would cost me nothing. I would get three points and three of the ore. Or maybe I want to move to Anteros, this would mean I would get seven points and a production of one energy by placing it here, but it would mean that I have to pay three eyes to get here on this asteroid. What's very important to know is that once you launched your probe and moved it to the asteroid that you want to land it on, it stays there until the end of the game. And remember, the reason why we are doing this, why we are coming to the asteroid belt, is not only to gather a lot of victory points, but also enlarging our production. Because when we have landed here, at the start of the next round, this will give me one energy, on top of all the other production I have from cards. We now know how we will launch one of the mining probes. The next thing we were allowed to do, by spending influence, was take part in the research program. Entering the research program means that you will upgrade one of these three actions. So we can upgrade our trade bureau action, our construction yard action, or our launch action. When you want to upgrade any of the three actions, you pay its cost, so it costs me two energy to move up to level one. I get one victory point for the upgrade, and this now means that each time I take the launch action, after I took it, I can take one of these resources. Moving to the next level would mean that I have to pay four energy. Again, I would gain victory points, and I made the action to launch my mining probe even better. Because as you can see, it's now cheaper for me to fly through the zones on the asteroid belt. And all actions you unlocked before are also active. Anytime you upgrade to level 3, you pay the cost, so it's 6 energy, you get the reward, 5 points, and you have an extra bonus. This means that you get to take that action again, but only that time gaining the extra bonus of level 1. So when I now take the launch action, I would be allowed by activating one of these symbols through a card or maybe through the council to take two launch actions because I am now at level 3. For my first launch, this would mean that I fly at a reduction into the asteroid belt and afterwards I get this bonus. For my second launch, that I get from my level 3 upgrade, I would be allowed to launch another mining probe, but I would not get the reduction, but I would get the level 1 reward after I completed the launch action. The first player to reach level 3 in any of these three research programs also gets a bonus of 3 victory points. Upgrading your construction yard action to a level 1 allows you to take the production from the card you buy you can take it an extra time when you buy it to use as a new outstation, but you can also get the production when you use it as an upgrade to an existing outstation. On level 2 you get a reduction of one alloy, and again level 3 allows you to take another construction yard action, but now you would only gain the production and not the reduction. And then finally upgrading your trade bureau action, on a level 1 allows you, after you took that action, to put one influence in the council. On level 2 you get 4 credits. And again, level 3, take the action again, but only with the level 1 bonus. You can also spend one influence from the council to take the favor action. We can find this symbol over here. Taking this favor action means that I can take a token by using influence, or I can activate this token that is printed on the board. The cost for activation is printed on the board here to influence and on the tokens you can find it here on the bottom. You can pay to influence to activate four productions from cards that you have in your space station. 
You can take this Mars droid, when you pay for it of course, and then once in a round you can spend it on one of your outstation cards, even if there's already a worker on it. This leader assistant token allows you to go to any spot where you normally go with leader tokens, but you can place it there even if all spots are already taken. And you can also take the production of one of your outstation cards. With this token you're allowed to take the launch action with a reduction of two ice, so this counts for the complete round. And whenever there's an ice cost on one of your outstations you don't have to pay it. When you have this token in front of you, you're allowed to take an extra manufacturing action each time you do it. And all products that you make cost one less R. Then there's one remaining action that we can go to with our leader token, and it's this contractor's association action. The cost for this action is described here, and you have to pay them to take one of these actions. We have two new symbols here, and one we already know. So this one would mean we pay two credits to take the construction yard action. Again, a good way to take this action when maybe all these spots are already filled or when there's already a worker on the card that allows you to take the construction yard action. A very important symbol is this manufacturing action. As you might have noticed, the costs for these cards is always a cost in alloy combined with something else. Alloy is something that we cannot get through normal production, we will have to manufacture it. On your player aid card you can see the cost for manufacturing. Whenever you take this action here, you pay one coin and then you can produce three things. What can we make? We can produce alloy and we can produce extra mining probes. This would mean that I can turn in two ore to make one alloy or I can turn in one ore, one advanced ceramics and one energy to place an extra mining probe on this launch complex. So you can mix and match any of these two productions up to three times. The last action you can take here is pay two coins to reassign a worker. And how do you reassign a worker? We will take a worker from a spot where we already have one and we will place it to another card that is of course empty and of a matching color. So with the reassign worker action, I would be allowed to move this blue worker from this card to this card and then activate its function. To show you the last spot where we can go to with the leader token, we will take a trip back to our space station. So one extra action that you can take is the action that is here on your corporate headquarter board. When you place one of your leader tokens on this spot, you will be allowed to activate one of your productions, so you can choose any of your outstation card, pick one of its production and activate it. So I could choose to gain one ice. I can take this action two times. The first time I take the action, I'm allowed to activate one production, but then I can place my leader pawn on the first space of the round track. I can put my leader token in the first space and this will allow me to go first during the next round. Because this space is now empty, I can go here a second time with another leader token. So we then place our leader token on the first open spot to the left. So leader tokens are used to take actions on the board, but we'll use workers to activate our outstation. Here on the board you can find the living quarters. You will always find one of each color per player. So in a two player game, we will have two greens, two reds, two blue and two gray. This spaceship, this trade ship, this is set up randomly. So now we have two extra workers that come to our planet and that we can use also as workers for our outstation. When you want to take and activate one of your outstations, you first look if the appropriate color that you have to use is still available in the living quarters. So if I want to activate a red outpost, I would now use one of these red tokens. If there are no more red workers available, I can look at the trade ship. If there's still one there, I can use that one. So no more red here, so I am now allowed to take this red worker to activate one of my red outpost cards. So now I will show you 
how you can use the workers you got from the board or from the trade ship to activate the outstations you have in front of you. The main rule is that when you place a worker on a card, the card has to be empty and you have to go to the outstation with a worker of the matching color. So if I want to activate any of these outstations, I would place a blue worker to activate this card. If you have an upgraded outstation that consists of two colors, like here, it's blue and red, it's the top card that decides which color you should use. So if I want to activate it, I will use a blue worker to activate this upgraded outstation. If you activate an outstation, you will activate all its functions. You do that starting from the top to the bottom and from left to right. So activating this main factory would mean that I would first gain two advanced ceramics, so I can keep track of that on my board. And then I can take two manufacturing actions. So this would help me to make alloy and to build mining probes. Next to it is something special. You have a symbol that has a dark background. It will also show you a cost. So I could take two free manufacturing actions. Of course, I have to pay to produce the resources, but then I can take another manufacturing action. But to do that, I would have to pay one ice. So I would have to be here and then I can pay one ice to take three manufacturing actions. Another example, I have this launch site so I can place a gray worker on the card. I would then get four ore and then I can take the launch action to launch a probe into the asteroid belt. The color of the card and the worker tell you something more about what that card is good at. Gray cards will be good at providing you with ore, ice and launch symbols. Red cards provide you with energy, which will help you to move your marker on the research project track. Blue cards are factory cards. They can give you alloy, they can give you advanced ceramics and action symbols are manufacturing symbols and also construction symbols. Green cards are more politic cards. They can help you with some influence in the council. They can provide you with credits, help you to make trades with the trade ships and gain you favors from the council. When there are no more actions that you want to take, you can also pass. You will move your disc from this top row to the first free space on the bottom row. So if Orange didn't want to take any more actions, they would now move their token to this spot. This would mean at the end of the round, we will move all these discs back up, that they will be the start player the next round. At the end of the first and the second round, we will perform the following steps. First, we will remove the trade ship that is still here. And we replace it by a new one. This gives us new trading actions and also new workers that will be available to us at the next start of the next round. Each player now takes their leader tokens back to their supply. We would now remove all workers we used from our outstations back to the board. Return all favor tokens. So if you bought one, you have to place it back here. And then we would remove all the project cards that are still left and replace them with new ones. And we will do the same for this row of facility cards. So we would clean up this row and replace it with all new ones. The last two things we need to do is that we take a look at the player order track. If a player placed a leader token on a spot in the turn order track, he would now be allowed to replace it with a turn order token. We would now move these discs to the top row and this would mean that orange will go first in the next round, followed by purple. Last thing we do is we move the round tracker to the next round. We won't take these steps at the end of the third round, because now it's time to take a look at our scores. At the end of the game, you can still add some points for leftover influence and leftover credits. And the player who is furthest along the score track is the winner of the game. So that was all you needed to know to play Cirrus. I hope you enjoyed the video and you can always like and subscribe to MeepleCare on YouTube, Facebook or Instagram. This was MeepleCare, taking care of your Meeple needs.